leukemia, blood diseases, see, sugar in the blood, blindness, huh? Deaf, dumbness. Oppression does that. Oppression does it. People end up in wheelchairs. Insanity end up in mental institution because of oppression. Oppression. But God said, He sent His word. See, He went about doing good. So healing is good. Sickness is bad. Disease is bad. See? John chapter 6, verse 38 says, John 6, 38 says, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Yeah. We just found out the will of God. What is the will of God? To heal all. Not just some. To heal all. That is the will of God to heal everybody. You got to know it. Know in here in, in your spirit, not in your head. See, sometimes we go to people that have maybe the illness that we have or the things that happen to them. And we ask, what remedy did you do? What book did you read? What doctor did you go to? How long did you have this? What are the symptoms and how did you get rid of them? And we try to go by man's way. We try to go the natural way. We try to go by by. By, by, by the beans and uh, 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 here in the natural realm. And we try all kinds of stuff. When Jesus said, I'm the healer in you. Receive the gift. They're charging you. They don't really know. They're guessing. <laughs> Doctor told me, he said, when my wife, first wife went home to be with the Lord, he said, sir, uh, we doctors really don't know how to heal people. We're, we're all, we're guessing at everything. We don't know. I had some, 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 some x-rays of, of my wife where they took about, and I had her taken to the U of M because she had cancer. And he asked me, what are you doing with us? I said, I got to take them over there to U of M. He said, what's, what's wrong with your wife? I said, she's got cancer. And they want to know so they can help her. He says, can I tell you something? I said, yes, sir. He said, we, we don't know. We're guessing at everything. See, when you ask God, he has a way of telling you. It'll knock you off your feet. Are doctors bad? No, they're wonderful. Thank God for doctors. That's why I'm alive today. Take medicine. But keep feeding your spirit. Jesus had a doctor with him called Dr. Luke. So if Jesus had the wisdom to have a doctor, we ought to have the wisdom to have doctors in our life. But keep feeding your spirit. I said, keep feeding your spirit. So, so God's will is to heal and make everybody whole. He told the lady with the issue of blood there in Mark chapter 5. He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Hallelujah. Whole. He didn't just heal her of her, uh, of her body. He healed her, the whole person. When God heals, see, you can get healed and have the emotional part of the, all the setbacks. Maybe you were sick for six years and couldn't get a job. Nobody would hire you because you get sick. So, so you're broke. Why? Because, see, you're sick. You can get healed, but you're still broke. And now you try to get a job, and they find out all those people laid you off or fired you. See, you're still broke. Or you're still emotionally scarred by those six years of being sick. So you're not whole. You're healed, but you're broke. You're healed, but emotionally you're scarred. Jesus said your faith is going to take care of your body and your soul, and financially what you had before, I'm going to get it back to you. A doctor can't do that to you. Are you listening? You can take a pill, but you're broke. You can take a pill and you wonder, why did I have that accident? You can take a pill and medicine for six months, but you still got that big scar. Mentally and on your face and on your head and on your back. Why? I'm glad you're here today. Because mental acceptance is not enough. I said mental acceptance is not enough. 
We must have a personal, active faith in God for our own healing. I'm speaking personally. I've fought some devils. I've fought some symptoms in my body. Because I knew that I'm at a place, unless God tells me to go to somebody, I'll go. But I'm at a place where God says, receive healing for yourself, son. Use your own faith. You know, 33 years in this, I should know something about receiving, about persecution, about mental activity. Are, are you listening? Not to get down on myself, not to give it a thought. Didn't start there, but I'm not there where I used to be. Now I just get invited. I don't even tell people when I'm in pain. Only one that knows most of that is my wife. Sometimes I don't even tell her that. Are, are you listening? Because, see, I'm going to count on the mighty God that's inside of me. Count on the almighty God <coughs> that's inside of you. Why? Because he's the one that created that body. You can't find one man, human being in this world that has the ability to create an eye, a liver, a lung. No, 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 you can't. I said, no, no, you can't. But if we listen to God, the creator... Of your physical body. Yeah. He knows what to do with it. Yes, he, he knows what to do with it. Yes, Glory, Glory to God. Glory. There's steps of there. There's levels of understanding. Levels of healing. Levels of divine health. Right. Meaning how to get there. Yeah. Yeah. So if God ever healed any one person. He'll heal two. He'll heal three. He'll eight, he'll, he will heal eight or nine. An infinitum. Yeah. He will heal all that believe. Yes. Else you could make him have a, you could make him have healing compassion on one and not the other one. No, he's it for everybody. I'm so glad he's for everybody. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God looks upon sickness as an oppression. That's what he looks on sickness as an oppression. In Job 42.20, God looks as, 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 as sickness, as captivity of Satan. A person, Job 42.10, a person that's always sick is captive to Satan. A person that's always sick, not the same sickness, or could be the same sickness all their life. Different types of sickness. They're, they're captive to Satan. Deuteronomy 28, it says that people that are always sick, it's the curse of the law. It didn't say they were sick. It said that what they got is the curse of the law. They are not cursed. They are Christian, they're blessed, they're anointed. You can't curse who God has blessed. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law, but not from the law. That, that, that law is out there yet. And there's things that any person can do to activate that curse and it'll jump on us. Because the Bible says the curse caused it shall not come. The curse caused it. You can't play around with sickness and disease. You can't play around and think you know it. If you don't know, run to somebody that does. Drop your pride and say, I don't know why I'm sick. Can you please help me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. While I was in Bible school, I used to go to healing school. I used to take time in my afternoon, sometimes on my day off, and I'd go there and sit in healing school. I saw a lot of things there. Saw a lot of things why people got sick. Saw a lot of people that did get healed of cancer, death diseases, why they got sick. See? Learned a lot of things and still learning. See? Because the devil doesn't care if you're a sinner or a saint. He's going to attack you. I hear people say there's no guarantee to it. Yes, there is. There's a guarantee with God. I said there's a guarantee with God. I hear people say, you know, you just never know. I know what the Bible says. And as long as I'm walking to the best that I know, I don't have to die in an accident. I'm not going to die in an accident. I'm not going to die of any sickness and disease. Why? Because I'm somebody special? No, because he's special. 
Because he said, with long life will I satisfy you, and here's how you get long life. Well, you just never know. No, you may not know, but God knows. This is an eternal word, not a Michigan word. This Bible is not for my, my 80, 90 years. This Bible, after I'm gone, will still be in effect. It'll still be on. It was here before I was born. Thousands of years this word's been around. And all God said, I sent you the word. I said, I sent the word. See? So, so, so in Matthew 8, 17 says, Matthew 8, 17 says, he said, he himself, Jesus, took and bore our sins on the cross. So if he took my sins, he took my, what? He healed me. Then you get over there to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You got gifts of the spirit, gifts of healings, plurality, gifts of healing. Well, Pastor Rodriguez, if you've got gifts of healing, why can't you lay hands on yourself? Since you got that gift, whenever you get sick, just use the gift. Because the gift is not for the person that has it. The gift is for somebody else. When you go to the store and buy a gift, you didn't buy it for yourself. You bought it for somebody else. When you go to a birthday party, you don't go with a gift for yourself to the party. No, 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 no. You got the gift for somebody. Do you see what I'm saying? But whatever you give, you get it back. So when you give healing, you get healing back. Whenever you're sick, look for somebody that's sick. Call them up and touch and agree. And say, I want to touch and agree. I heard you've been sick. I heard you've been attacked by some disease. I want to touch and agree with you. And you say, Lord, I'm sowing this as a seed. And I thank you, Lord. Glory to God. God says, okay, I have to give you what you just sowed. You just sowed a word, a healing word, so I'm going to send a word to you. I'm just giving you some stuff that I learned. When I went to the healing school, you, you, you see that? Healing begins in the spirit of man. It never begins in the body. So we walk by faith and not by sight. Don't look to your body to see how you are. Don't, don't, don't look to feeling, see how you feel, to say, I'm getting better. Look to the Bible, and you won't see where you're getting better. You'll see where you're healed. You'll never look in the Bible to see how you're getting to be. You look in the Bible and see who you are. You're a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If you look in the Bible, you're a champion, you're a priest, you're a royal priest, glory to God, you're a king, and, and you rule by word, you're a ruler of things. You're not going to get saved, you're saved. If you're saved, you're healed. I said, if we're saved, we're healed. Well, I don't believe it. Keep coming and you'll get it. You're, no, you're not going to get it immediately. There's a lot of stuff that will come at you so you won't believe it. And it's not, it's not from God. I said, it's not from God. It's circumstances in life. People, accidents will, will keep you investigating instead of believing. Once you believe, you won't have to investigate. Because you're so busy enjoying the revelation of the triune God, the, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You'll be enjoying the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You, can, you, can, you cannot enjoy the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob blind. Blind. Deaf. You can't do it being in a hospital tied up to a machine and say, I'm, I, I am all that God says I am. That's why the time to get find out about healing is when you're not sick. People say, I don't know why I came today. It's healing and I'm not sick. I tell you, the, the world's just practicing on people. I try to tell that to people. Ever since I've been teaching it, 33, 33 years ago when I started teaching, I said, listen, come when you're healed, when you're healed to hear on healing. Come to come when all your bills are paid and here on, on finances. Why? Because the world's practicing on you. The money that you made 30 years ago, 
You, it, the gas prices that 30 years ago are not the same prices now. So if you don't learn now, imagine if Jesus doesn't come and some of you that are young, in another 20 years, you won't be paying $4 worth of gas. Right. Right. Oh, no. You'll be glad. You'll be hoping to with $4. <laughs> you say, man, I remember when gas was $4. You better get into the word now. You, you think cancer is something, and it is. There's sickness we don't know about that Satan hasn't bought on. Just read in Deuteronomy 62. And, and he said, and all sickness and disease that are not mentioned. Satan's practicing on people. Now's the time to get into the word and find out. I'm healed. That's all you need to know. And have faith in it. Yeah. See, healing belongs, it begins in your inward man. The center and core of the tripart being. You reach, that's where you reach God. You don't reach God with your, with your mental. Your soul governs your physical life. How is that? How does my soul, my mind, govern my physical life? Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh, so is he. Well, I guess because my uncle had it, my dad had it, my mom had it, I'm about that age, so I'll begin to get it, and let me check out what the symptoms are. See, now your soul, your, your information is governing how you're acting and what you're doing, what you're eating, what you're drinking, because, see, my father drank that, my mother drank that, so, and, and my uncle, and, and see, this is what that, so I'm just going to quit eating, drinking that. The Bible says religious people won't pray for their food. They're so embarrassed. But new creatures in Christ pray for their food. Why? Because they're keeping themselves alive. Because you say, I, I bless this. I hear people say, Lord, bless this. No, you bless it. He's not eating it. You are. God's not eating that, that, that food at the restaurant. You are. So, so the Bible says, you bless it. I bless this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why? Now you're empowering and, and, and you got to believe what you're saying. That food will not hurt you. That food will not hurt you. Understand me? It ain't going to hurt you. Why? Because you blessed it. You empowered it. You know, that's why people don't say, don't be ashamed of the gospel. For it's the power of God unto salvation. Huh? It is? I said it is. It, it is. See? So, so your soul governs the, your physical body. And, 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 and its illness and distress and its torments come from the mind. From getting wrong information instead of getting revelation. I want revelation, not information. I don't want statistics of those that have died. I want statistics of those that are alive. Yeah. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. There's walking people that are dead, zombies. Alive but dead. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Some people are dead twice. Spiritually, they're dead. See, physically, they're dead. Because they can't do with their hands what they should do. That's why he's dead. Huh? Spiritually dead and then physically dead. Are you listening? Yeah, Jesus said, I come for the whole man. I said, I come for the whole man. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Your body responds to the impressions of your soul, your mind. There are organic and functional diseases. Let me see. Let, let, let me educate you a little bit here in the spirit. There are organic and functional diseases. A person can suffer and die prematurely with either one of these. It can, yeah, if, they don't have, if they're not taught. The functional induced diseases, I am told, include heart disease, trouble, high blood pressure, ulcers, asthma. What you eat, what you're putting in your body, 
are induced diseases, not the devil. Induced diseases. And then, then there's some that the devil will put on you. But you can see the people at IHOP, and they're not hopping. <laughs> they're weak and crippled because they, they order six or seven pancakes, throw the syrup on it, and get sick and said, lay hands on me and go right back to IHOP and put that syrup on that got them sick. That's induced sickness and disease. Ulcers induced by worrying, causing acid in the body. Christians, tension. Now let's go to something else. Tension, nervousness, lack of faith, fear. Both real and not real. Fear, imagine. Fear, not real. Frustrations, symptoms of man. Because they go to a funeral and they say, oh my God, I wonder if that will happen to me. No, you shouldn't be wondering. Who told you to wonder at a funeral? Go in there believing who you are. That with long life you walked in there, with long life you're going to walk out. See, we can teach on healing, but we got to explain, look, what about where we're at now? I'm not the lady with the issue of blood. I'm not the man there at the gate beautiful. I don't know what happened to the man at the gate beautiful. But if he was here, he'd tell you why he was crippled. Huh? See, we just tell you that Jesus, the man said, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have in the name of Jesus, I rise up. Yeah. But that didn't get you healed. Huh? We got to bring the man over here and say, what happened? Why were you all sick all those 30 some years? And another thing I wanted you to, I want to ask you, if Jesus walked by, why didn't, why didn't he heal you? Why, why did he, 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 three and a half years, he walked by you. you, you were right there in the marketplace where everybody saw you, he had to have seen you. Why didn't he heal you? Why didn't he give you a miracle? Well, there's many, one for one, one of them is Jesus only did the things the Father told him to do. So Jesus never did tell him. But the Bible does say ask. Why didn't that man ask? He was asking, but he was asking for money. That's why he was sent there, so he could get money. Alms, alms, so they gave him alms. So he had the money, but he was sick. Just ask. My God said, ask, you shall receive. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you ask, you'll receive. Not you might receive could receive. No, no, ask. And ask in faith. How do you know you're asking in faith? Because you're expecting. If you're not expecting, why ask? Huh? Why go to the movies if you're not expecting to have fun while you're watching? I guess I'll go to the movie. I hope, I, I hope it's good. No, because you're putting some hard-earned cash. And then you bought some popcorn and a pop and see, and you want to, you go expecting. And you know why we expect? Because somebody told you, man, that was good. I'm going. <laughs> All he did is tell you, I'm good. And then, there you go. You cut everything on, you go. And Jesus said, you're healed. Uh -huh. I got to hear and hear and hear and hear. And I'm going to have to find out somebody that's got filled with what I got before I really heal. Let's give Jesus as much audience as we give some, somebody else. Huh? Glory to God. I said glory to God. Why is a man or woman dominated by fear? Because he's not using or she's not using their faith. You can't be in faith and fear at the same time. Why is he or her not using faith because the reason they're not using their faith because they're out of tune and out of harmony with God. How do you know you're in harmony with God? Because the first thing when you wake up, the first thing you do is say, ooh, I love you, Father God. I love you. Oh, I love you. Huh? He says he's a jealous God. What's the first thing on your mind? That's what you've been thinking about. What's the last thing on your mind when you go to sleep? What's the first thing on your mind during when you get up? And what's the 
things that's completely, constantly on your mind all day long. Well, that ain't church. You're religious. Shut up. You're religious. I didn't say, I didn't say religion. I was talking about God. You ever hear people that don't understand it? They say, you're in religion. No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I love Christ. So I'm going to talk about him. You love your mom, you talk about your mom. Oh, so here we go talking about your mom. Well, yeah, because I love her. Well, I love Christ. He's a person. He's not an alien. Huh? Hallelujah. Yeah, but you're a minister. You always talk about ministry. Well, what are you? You work at the shop. Why you do talk about your job? Can't you talk about anything but your job? Huh? You're a pilot and you're telling me the turbulence and all that. Why are you always talking about your job? Huh? You're a lawyer. You're always talking about the cases and all that. I don't want to talk. Every time you come around me, you're talking about your job. Well, and I can't talk about my job? I'm going to talk about Jesus. I said, I'm going to talk about Jesus. Healing Jesus. My healer. I said, my healer. Man's severe struggle is within himself. He's condemned by his own sins. As long as this is true, his or her faith will not work. Because if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence or faith towards God. The question presents itself, does a person have faith, whether it's her or him, is she or he right with God? The answer is yes. Why? If, because you're born again, you have faith with God. Whether you're doing wrong or doing bad, you still have faith in God. Whether you do wrong or right, you still have the faith of God. When you sin, God didn't take the faith away from you. He gave you the faith, and you still got the faith to ask for forgiveness. And you have faith that he what, took it away. And you have faith that he said, I don't remember when you sinned. Well, Lord, I just sinned a month ago. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, but I remember what I did before. No, I don't. That's done. There's no record of it. So if there's no record of it, you never did sin. Can you see that? So why would I condemn myself then? There's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. I'm in Christ. I'm in the word. I'm in redemption. I'm in forgiveness. I'm in the anointing. Huh? I'm in his hand. Who can pluck me out of the hand of God? Huh? See, I get rid of all of that. Now I said, Lord, I, I got faith. Thank you. If I got faith for all of that, then I got faith for healing. I got faith for whatever you can do for me, Lord. And there's many ways to get healed. What faith is this? Many things. Faith is the meeting ground between your limited self and your limitless God. Faith is the meeting ground between your limited self and your limited God, limitless God. Meaning, here's this faith that I can't see. But I know I've been trying to get healed. I've been going to every doctor. I've got x-rays on. I went to the hospital. I'm still hurting. I go to bed sometimes, I got, you know, I carry bear with me, buffering with me. I don't tell nobody, but man, I'm hurting. I'm real macho, but man, this thing hurts. See, that's a limit, limited person. But you take faith and approach God. Faith is what you use as your point of contact. Faith, when you come with faith and you let me put my hands on you, I can't heal you, but my hand is the point where you're going to meet the power of God. I can't heal you, but when your faith touched my hand, there is the point of contact where God's power is. If you don't have no faith that I have power in my hands, you can't receive what I got in my hand. See, because if my hands were always anointed, every place I go, don't be no sick people around me. But people can know that I lay hands on somebody and they got healed 
And they said, well, let me try you. See, that's your problem. You're going to try me. You're going to try a law called the, con the law of contact and transmission, and you don't try the law of contact and transmission. You believe in the law, and that law then comes into effect and gets you healed. Do you see that? These prayer cloths, there's nothing, there's nothing supernatural about this. I don't know why, but God used cloth. He doesn't use metal. He didn't use a metal. There's, it does, he, his power doesn't work through metal. It works through cloths. I don't know why. And that's why we have prayer cloths. But, but see, nothing, no, see, the point of contact is that you have faith that when you touch these here, that, that, that you're going to come in contact with God's power. Do you see that? Uh, you see that? Like these clothes right now, I'm teaching there's an anointing on them. See, I can hang them in the closet, but if somebody just touches them, they get healed. They, they, they can go in and they touch the pillow where I sleep in. They can touch the bed sheets where I lay down. Why? The anointing lingers. It doesn't just get off when I leave. It lingers. Smith Wigglesworth proved it. He laid in the bed and his man wouldn't, he, he, his man just said, I ain't going to church. I, he was just mean with his wife, a drunkard, just, just abusive with his wife. And his wife said, I can't get him to go to church. <laughs> he laid in where Smith lived where, and he got saved while he was laying there. Now we're talking about the sovereignty of God. Huh? Just have faith that God can heal and save. Just have faith that God can take care of that reprobate woman or man, that reprobate man or woman, that reprobate wife or husband, that reprobate son and daughter. He can do it. I said he can do it. He's God Almighty. If he can make a donkey talk, if he can make a raven go into the castle and bring the best delicacies, in the king's palace and bring it to his prophet. Huh? Are you listening? If he can take a man and doesn't die and take him to heaven, you don't have to die to get to heaven. God can take a man in his flesh and bone body and take him to heaven and don't ask for your permission. Now, if he can take a body, a man in a body, flesh and bone body, and take him to heaven, nothing happened, what do you think he can do with your body, fresh bone and body here on earth? We got to realize who we're serving. It's not a figment of our imagination. It's not some church figure. It's not some personality. It's God! Almighty God! I said it's God. We must reverence who's in us. Reverence who's in us. Sometimes we have more reverence for a man and a woman than the God that's with us all the time. We travel miles to go see somebody. And God says, I'm in you. In both cases, men travel far and near to go to a healer. And he's not a healer, it's the healer in him. Spend all kinds of money. And God says, I'm in you. The sinner goes far and wide, spends $80 at a concert, brings home the T-shirt, and wants to let you know, look where I went. But don't talk about Jesus around me. And don't you wear no T-shirt where Jesus is Lord. I ain't going with you. I'm embarrassed to walk any place with you. You got Jesus is Lord. Jesus saves. But you got this reprobate on your T-shirt, cigar smoking. Huh? Cancer smoking, rather. Pill popping. And you gave him your money. But you won't sow into the gospel. You won't tithe. You won't give offering. And wondering why your life is, their life is so depressed. Because God says, I am a jealous God. And I will not have no strange God before. 
Now, God in his sovereignty will heal a sinner in his sovereignty. But God moves you mostly by faith. So how can a reprobate expect to have cancer or sickness and run up to God and say, God, I receive your healing? Because that would be, then, then what? See, in his sovereignty he can do it. Because it would be wrong for you to come and keep listening on healing and doing and coming and tithes and offering. You're not paying for healing. Get that off your mind. Somebody just had that in their mind. That's all you did. See, you need to keep hearing. God loves you. It's not mad at you what you're thinking. And then we do all this, but he or she doesn't have to do it. Just live in sin and say, Father, I, I believe I receive. No. I said, no. We have to be taught to reverence Almighty God within us. That's why I tell you when I teach on healing, I'll pray for you, yes. But keep on hearing, and this way when you come up, you come expecting as my hands to be a point of contact for you're going to receive the healing power in you. I prayed for, for, for uh, Sister Edna last week. It was so beautiful because she was back there and she asked for prayer, and I put my hands on her. I got blessed because my, my, the top of her head got so hot. See, her healing went in her. See, now if it would have been a miracle, she would have told me. But man, my, well, I was just so blessed. Because my hand was so hot, her head was so hot. I told baby, healing went in her. Do you see that? Because see, why ask me to pray if you don't expect anything to happen? Then nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. I have, I have people that know me real good. And I got this healing anointing on me right now. And, my, and, and, they, and they'll walk around with me with a cold. Instead of saying, can I put that coat on? Can I put the socks you got on? See, so you know why? Because they still need to keep hearing and hearing. I, I had privilege of walking and being around the healing ministers. Dr. Hagen went to healing school. Oral Roberts. When I used to work at the City of Faith, I used to go up because, you know, I was a supervisor. I used to go to the 60th floor where his apartment and office was and sit in his chair. I knew, what, I knew that anointing was there. It's, it's no, no small things happened here he had on his desk. I used to sit on Went in, all over in his apartment, his bedroom and everything. I was privileged to be in, in, in the same place as old Robert was. Kenneth Hagen shook hands. Kenneth Copeland. Jerry Savelle. I was after it. I said I was after it. I wanted that. Because when I was in the world, I was with what you call in the crime thing, with the best of them, because they're the best in crime. Oh, yeah, there's levels, just like in Christianity. In the 70s, the people that were the top drug dealers, they were my best friends. I said, if I did it in the world, I can do it over here with God. And I'm a new creature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that, the, the stuff that got, I, I, I was addicted back then to drugs. But I'm addicted to the word. I'm addicted to the anointing. I got to have the anointing. I got to have the word. I got to have the Holy Spirit speak to me. I have to. I, I know the Holy Ghost on me. It's on me now. I know when it's not on, on me, but I know when it's on me. When I was in the world, I knew when it was, the spirit was around me. I had a spirit that used to follow me. I sensed him. I knew he was around me. Some of my friends didn't know it. And when they knew it, they wanted to cry. Grown men wanted to cry. I had one of the top, back then, you know, he got saved, thank God, drug dealers in Saginaw back in the 70s. He came over the house, we went downstairs. See, I knew it. I went upstairs. <laughs> I left him down there. Pretty soon, I heard some of them stairs. And he said, Joey. I said, what? He said, what's down there? 
I said, "Uh uh-huh. He was scared, and that guy used to carry a nine millimeter. He wasn't scared of nobody. That thing scared him. Yeah. He used to follow me. Spirits are real. Holy Ghost is real. The devil's real. He just wanted to let you know that, no, I'm not real. Oh, he's real. I said, he's real. He's out to kill you. One time I was coming from, I was coming at 3 o'clock in the morning, coming to a place where I should have never been. And I'm, I'm coming home, and it's around 3 o'clock in the morning. I, I'm turning to, to go to, towards my house. And all of a sudden, I stopped the car, and some, that thing, it manifested. I didn't see it, but my hair stood up. I'm a grown man back then, like I am now. I wanted to cry. Everything in my body wanted to scream and holler and cry. And I jumped out of my car. And I kept looking at the car, just looking. I was scared. And then I kept moving closer and further and closer. And it left. But it wasn't around you. It was out to kill me and destroy me. But thank Jesus. Somebody prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me. And I got saved. So when I say these things to you and the young people, it's not something I read out of a book. Twice a gun was put to my head. Once I put it to my head because I was playing around. They said, there ain't no, I didn't think there was any bullets. And I went, Ksh. And I went to work and they called me. He said, Joey, you know that gun that you put to your head? And he said, it misfired. There was a bullet in the chamber. So I'm not talking to you about just stuff in the comic books. I tell people, listen, especially young people, you don't know everything. It's good to have plan, but don't leave God out of the plan. Because he'll kill you. I thank God somebody prayed for me that I didn't get killed. And all the stuff, he attacked me physically and I'm still alive. Somebody pray for me that I get to school and meet my spiritual father, Kenneth e. Hagan. Thank God for him. Thank God for him. Because he showed me the ditches in his life. And now when I see a ditch, I said, uh-oh, I ain't getting there. I'm leaving back. I really wanted to get into the teaching, but I never did. I just got into the introduction. <laughs> Because God wants everybody healed. That's why I tell you, some of you are ready for healing today. And some of you just ask God, are you ready? If you're not, just keep coming because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. But the point of contact is where you come expecting. And when you come expecting in faith, you'll draw out of me the anointing. Especially this hand right now is tingling. See, I'm saying that before Almighty God. He'll hold me accountable for what I'm saying. I said he'll hold me accountable for what I'm saying. But you've got to come up expecting. Don't come up to try. Because I can't heal nobody. But this healing anointing he just dropped in me, it'll take care of business. And so if you're one of those persons, that you sense you're ready, my faith is at that place, then that's the person I want to pray to. I'm not saying I won't ever pray for you. Brother Joe Gutierrez, I need to pray for you, son. He did tell me to pray for you. Joe Gutierrez. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, I thank you for the anointing on these cloths. Thank you. <laughs> he knows about it, huh, son? Yes, yes. Father, I thank you as I lay hands.